Thank you very much for the introduction. Thank you very much for being there for this talk about Acme. So uh, this talk is about sharing uh, why my team decided to use um, Acme protocol, not on the internet side as it is has been designed uh, for, but inside our private network in our organization. And if I am not too bad during the next uh, 30 minutes, why are you going maybe to use Acme also in your private network uh, if it is not already the case? So, I'm Christophe. I work as a security engineer for the, the assurance malady, which is uh, uh, the French public healthcare insurance. I am also the co-founder and co-organizer with friends um, uh, of Pass the Sort, which is a conference dedicated to free software and security. Uh, starting with a short poll to know you a, a little more, uh, three choices for you. Uh, first choice, who don't know what uh, the ACME protocol is at all? Do not be shy, just raise your hand. Almost maybe 10%. Let's go. Uh, second choice. Have you already used Acme protocol maybe to get some certificate from uh, Let's Encrypt uh, uh, Certificate Authority, but don't know really how it works deeply? Raise your hand. Okay. 30% 30, uh, 30 almost. So half of the room are already Acme experts, and I have to take care of what I am going to say um, about it. So I, uh, but I think there is some room to learn things also. So thank you for your participation, and let's go for it. First, the problem we have faced with our team, um, we have got uh, the short version, one slide. Uh, our internal um, web application, we have got a lot of them, are not all HTTPS accessed, uh, effectively, or not well, uh, well par uh, parametered. Uh, Expired certificates, self-signed certificates are not HTTPS. You can uh, agree on that. Uh, also, our private PKI is part of the problem. Uh, this is the short version. Uh, I will give you um, more context with a longer story. I have um, 80,000 colleagues, uh, all connected on-site or remotely to the same global private network of our company. Um, to get their job done, the IT teams provide to our colleagues hundreds of applications, mainly internal web applications that are available at the national level, developed and hosted at the national level, and more of them at local level. Uh, since uh, several, several years as a security team, we require HTTPS uh, for uh, access to all uh, our internal web application, obviously. But, uh, to support this effort, since a long time, uh, 2008, we provide an internal PKI to provide certificates to the application administrator, certificates which are essential to set up HTTPS access to uh, the application. So we have got some one private PKI inside our private network, and it provides two types of workflows. First one is powered by a web portal and is fully manual. Uh, so, as you can see on the schema, uh, the administrator uploads its request, certificate request, to the web portal. Uh, a CISO, a security person, validates uh, this uh, request, or not, of course. And uh, if it is validated, the PKI signs the certificate uh, it has been asked by the admin. Uh, the admin can download it manually also. And finally, it has to deploy it uh, on its uh, applic uh, web application. The drawbacks of this, work, uh, this first workflow are quite uh, evident. It is slow, it is error prone, due to the fact that all steps uh, are manual, from the CSA upload to the uh, certificate deployment. Another drawback, 
the validation process uh, phase of the um, of the workflow uh, is manually done uh, by a CISO person, a security person. So obviously we are not able to scale correctly this step of validation. So the final impact of this is that the web portal workflow of the PKI is only open of, of a small part, a small, a small subset, a subset of administrators we have. So mainly those working at the national level. So we have tried to address some of the, the lacks of our uh, setup uh, of uh, setup of the private PKI, trying to address uh, the needs of the huge project that are coming over and over more with lots of machine, lots of application, and we set up a second automated workflow by opening our REST API to this project. More specifically, we have opened the REST API, uh, which is part of the um, private PKI setup, to the deployment server. Uh, this project comes with uh, a deployment server. So the positive aspect of this workflow is that it brings automation of the um, certificate issuance for this project. So this is quite fine. But uh, it is still error prone uh, for the certificate renew phase and for the certificate deployment phase. Obviously, another drawback that this uh, workflow is only dedicated to the big project needs and what uh, what's for the, the rest of the, the other types of project. So finally, we have also, due to the sensitivity of the deployment server, to set up some, some constraints like uh, a dedicated DNS subdomain for asking uh, the certificate. So finally, what we need to improve uh, HTTPS adoption inside our network, uh, how to open our PKI to all potential administrators that need it. Uh, first, we need open, uh, automated certificate issuance without the need to enroll uh, the potential client before. We don't want to add hassle for clients, but we don't want neither had more load on the PKI team. We need also a secure request validation. We know all that is it. It is, it is uh, quite challenging to do a good uh, validation of certificate request, and we want to deploy a new solution, but securely. This validation also has to be able to scale in order to be able to open this solution to all uh, the administrators. The PKI uh, availability, we want so to open uh, it, uh, as I said before, to all potential users without the need to know them before. And also, we don't want to be, uh, to require to add more people to add our existing PKI. So, let's try to, uh, I'm quite ambitious, so I want directly to build, but I have to uh, we have to search for the solution first. Um, let's see if something already exists in the private PKI ecosystem and effectively some automated protocols for certificate issuance uh, exist for a long time, uh, like SCAP or EST protocols. They come from the network world, has been created by uh, the two of them by Cisco. They are quite old. For example, SCAP only get a, an RFC uh, three years ago, but uh, uh, long after its creation. But uh, for example, uh, SCAP suffers from several uh, security problems like uh, potential device impersonification, so not very secure uh, delivery of uh, new certificates. For the main um, version, de uh, usually deployed in every environment, uh, it only supports RSA keys, and um, there are also some uh, practical uh, uh, drawbacks. Uh, um, th these protocols require cl client enrollment, which is very time organizational and resources consuming for uh, an, an organization like, uh, like us. And finally, we have uh, been quite surprised because uh, the clients offer 
of uh, this, uh, the client part of the, these protocols are not, are not very uh, large and does not cover um, uh, all the software stack. Or even the language diversity is not very, uh, very large also. So, no evident solution on the uh, private PKI ecosystem. Let's go and see if something exists on the internet for automated T TLS server certificate issuance because it is our use case we want to cover. But effectively, when you are speaking about uh, TLS server certificate issuance in an automated way, obviously, Let's Encrypt came up very fastly. It is a free and automated public CA. Uh, it is used TLS server certificate. It has been launched in 2015. And it has a tremendous impact on web traffic. Before its launch in 2014, we were around uh, 27% of HTTPS traffic. Nine years later, this year, we are far over 80% of HTTPS. And we can attribute this huge change in the landscape of uh, web mainly to Let's Encrypt. Effectively, this year, uh, seven, uh, seven certificates on 10 signed on the internet has been signed by Let's Encrypt. So, what is for, for me the, the main, um, uh, the main uh, reason of the success of Let's Encrypt is its protocol. It's based on the ACME protocol, uh, which is we, uh, how ACME has changed the web. So it, it has changed the web, uh, according to me, because it is a fully automated protocol. No human interaction between a client who wants a certificate and the PKI or the ACME server in that case to get, renew, and deploy certificates. The, you don't need a tool any enrollment of any kind. The enrollment is inside, directly embedded inside the protocol. It is also, it relies also on open standard. You, uh, in open standard, you have got the main RFC number here. It is a, a final RFC, not a draft. And so due to this uh, open standard way of uh, doing things, you have got dozens of clients, all open source and some servers implementation, relying, written on very different technology. It is an important point. We are going to see it further. And finally, it is a very robust protocol on the security side and on the implementation, uh, sorry, implementation side, well, whatever. And uh, it has been battle tested at the internet scale. Uh, and we are going to see its design is quite generic and extensible. So let's see how it does work a little deeply. Uh, first, we have seen, so first, what is the main goal of the ACME protocol? Uh, it is a protocol for a client. If he want to have a certificate for a particular domain, he has to prove the ownership on its domain. And all the goal of the ACME protocol is do the verification of this ownership in a fully automated way. It is the game changer. First, so how does it uh, work? Uh, you can see uh, on the step one, the client register to the ACME server or use an already account. Um, created before. Uh, creating an account is just providing a public key to the ACME server. Uh, then, sorry, uh, he can, uh, the client can send the certificate request for a particular uh, domain or several one, but uh, we are going to focus on one, uh, asking a certificate for one particular uh, domain. And then the core of the uh, protocol is there. Uh, you are, uh, the, the, uh, the ACME server will challenge the client on its ownership of the, uh, of the domain. So how we do that? Uh, the, the ACME server generate, uh, a random token. It send it to the client with a challenge. We are, we are going to, 
uh, there are different kind of challenge, but the main mainly use is the HTTP O1 challenge. And to uh, complete this challenge, the client has to um, uh, take this token and put it, publish it on um, uh, HTTP URL, which is a well-known path under well-known path, and uh, uh, HTTP uh, the path is HTTP the domain uh, slash well-known slash Acme challenge slash the token value. What does it prove? It proves the client is executing on the machine under which match with the, uh, the domain, uh, the DNS domain uh, corresponding IP address. So is already on the machine and publishing that kind of uh, HTTP URL proves to the server that he has administrator rights on this particular machine. These two conditions allows him to ask, make him legitimate to ask a certificate. So when he, he has done this task, publishing the token at the right URL value, the client informs the CA that the, the Acme server that the challenge is complete, and the CS server, the Acme server, will try directly during the session at step, at step seven to grab the, the, this uh, well-known URL, and if the token is present at the location, get the file corresponding, check the file content, and if it is the, con the attended content, the challenge is complete. And the client has proved directly online during the session that he has ownership on this particular domain. So he's, he's candidate to get finally the certificate um, uh, he has asked in the step two. I, uh, I, I have been very long, but in reality, this kind of uh, dialogue between a client ACME like and the server ACME like just has a duration, uh, medium duration of 10 or to 20 seconds, 10 or 20 seconds to get a certificate securely. Quite impressive. We have been impressed and uh, we have decided to adopt this protocol to upgrade our PKI. So we have decided to deploy the ACMED protocol as a, as a third workflow in our existing private PKI setup. How did we do that? We have decided as a team to deploy an ACME proxy in front of our existing PKI, and um, it is based on the serless product, an open source ACME proxy written in Python, but um, other implementation exists, uh, pro proprietary ones or uh, open source ones. Uh, it's very important for us, uh, the term of proxy, because the ACME proxy there only implements the ACME protocol. It don't sign, uh, it does not sign any certificate. It, it is always our existing PKI that sign the certificate if the client under the challenge sent by the ACME proxy correctly. So, no, you don't have to modify your setup on your endpoints to integrate a new PKI. You rely in our case, we rely in our existing PKI. It is, it is just a different way to obtain the certificate, an automated way. We, as a team, we, as a, we have also uh, chosen a reference ACME clients to support it for Linux and Windows uh, platform. It is the Lego, uh, an open source ACME client, client written in Go. We have also uh, provided Support and evangelism, documentation, documentation website, webinars, support to admin for initial uh, usage of ACME on the platform, support to architect and uh, project for specific ACME clients, uh, new use case. So, main uh, users follow our choice, but we have seen some of them main their own choices. For example, we have seen other usage of other Acme clients and platform. For example, we have seen Acme.sh client on AX, even 
very old uh, operating system uh, deserves automated way to to get certificates, I guess or not. Uh, net, we have seen um, a client executed on network appliances. We have also seen some users uh, do uh, use the embedded ACME support inside some middlewares. Uh, like uh, the web server Kelly or uh, Apache, Apache through uh, the use of uh, ModMD um, module or uh, traffic as a reverse proxy. And we have also seen a uh, new kind of um, uh, usage, uh, uh, for example, at the server creation using Ansible Acme client. I will uh, give some insight uh, more later on that. Uh, so where we are, yeah, uh, we are speaking about here of our experience. We are ending a new, on a new uh, use case pro, uh, provided by our architect, internal architect. And uh, concerning new use, use case, we have seen um, we have seen there that uh, Acme has been a success for the TLS server certificate use case kind of. Uh, your web server, in fact. But we have seen a new RFC draft that want to use Acme for a different use case, uh, which is obtaining a client certificate, not a, a server certificate, uh, for a device. The condition here are validating some of the properties of the, of the device, uh, like the device identity, the certificate key, protected by uh, the private key uh, corresponding to the public key in the certificate will be protected, need to be protected by a secure crypto processor like a TPM or a secure enclave. A new challenge has been uh, registered by this uh, RFC draft. I insist on the draft. Uh, it is a device attest 01 and it is based on attestation, crypt uh, cryptographically signed attestation. So, uh, we are on the very early stage of this RFC, but I mention it just to uh, give you some insight of new uh, usage of Acme. Uh, for the moment, this RFC draft does not say how to validate the attestation, nor how to trust the device identity. Because of what? Because these tasks are very platform dependent. And we, when we are speaking about managing the platform, Obviously, one name came uh, almost immediately, it is Apple, and effectively, they have published an early um, uh, implement, first implementation of this RFC draft uh, on their uh, man, uh, MDM solution, which is uh, uh, the acronym for Manage uh, Devices Solution. And uh, they have um, uh, set up uh, an architecture based on their uh, Apple attestation server. And uh, when a device asks uh, to the Acme server a client device, a client certificate, it gets the, he answers the challenge uh, sent by the Acme server by getting an attestation from the attestation server from Apple and send it back to the Acme server. The, the Acme server has to trust the attestation server from Apple, and if it is the case and uh, he validates the attestation, he sends it back a uh, client certificate to the device who can use it to uh, access the other uh, servers inside the organization. So I close uh, the little window of the future use of Acme, of Acme. And we are going to exchange about the takeaway you can have from our experience. What we, we can share is we, you can upgrade your internal PKI with some peace of mind because you are going to deploy if you make this choice to uh, rely on secure domain validation to, uh, to get new certificates. You are deploying an automated protocol that has been tested at scale very you can be quite confident uh, when you see uh, our Let's Encrypt work uh, and the scale it operates. Um, if you want to, like us, you can open your PKI to all. You don't have to make any enrollment at all. It is very important if you have constraints on, on your manpower and you don't have 
to uh, add more complexity in your organization, more people to manage the PKI solution. And you, uh, in our case, we have very pleased that we don't have to change our PKI. We rely on our existing PKI. It's very important. No change. We, in fact, uh, to be transparent, we have deployed our new uh, Acme setup without asking anything from the IT architecture teams in our company. So it is a proof there are no impact on the endpoints or in, on the servers. Automation. In our classic uh, infrastructure, I call it uh, legacy, we Acme helps our application administrators to get and to set up TLS correctly, if it is not the case, or just deploy HTTPS. We have seen the conversion of more than 140 uh, applications uh, switching to TLS in less than two months of exploitation of our uh, new Acme setup. Uh, on the more automated infrastructure we have, uh, calling it uh, DevOps, uh, if they have need to deploy a dedicated PKI to do automated certificate issuance, they no more need to uh, use uh, this dedicated PKI. We can consider it that certificates, normal certificates uh, uh, issued by our uh, mainstream uh, PKI become uh, first class citizen on the ad, uh, development uh, method and uh, like they do uh, for infrastructure as code or secure defined uh, network. And bonus point, security uh, through ACME can be seen as easy and efficient and not just an hassle uh, for administrators and compliancy uh, uh, things. So uh, it is a bonus point for us because it is not, we have to be transparent, not always the case. Um, very important uh, for my part, um, you, as a security team, you don't enforce a port, you only enforce a protocol, not the tooling. It's very important because we have a very large diversity of Acme tools, Acme clients, and it helps uh, the adhesion of, to Acme of a very diverse uh, IT people inside your organization. We have seen uh, people coming from the development, from uh, the network, from the administration, and uh, it helps a lot. Fun fact, we have also seen already used on the internet factor, uh, because people, administrators have already used uh, Acme on their personal uh, server on the net. And when they uh, land uh, on the morning, morning and uh, see Acme is deployed on their uh, workplace, they are quite uh, happy and use it quite uh, fast. And uh, finally, uh, you can capitalize as us on the new use cases. Uh, because uh, the adoption of uh, Acme has also been effective at the architecture level, and we have seen uh, um, architects coming to us uh, and saying, we are going to use Acme during the server provisioning uh, phase using Ansible Acme uh, playbook. Uh, I say, uh, if you want to, I don't support it, but I will support the Acme part. You are going to support the, uh, the Acme client part and in the win-win uh, situation, and effectively, they get certificate. Uh, we have set up a, a certificate profile ex uh, specifically for them uh, using server and client authentication key usage in this certificate they get during the uh, server provisioning phase. And after, just from the start, after server creation, the server has mutual TLS capability and can do right uh, um, uh, after creation, uh, MTLS. You have seen there are new use cases are, that are coming on the uh, RFC side, and uh, it exists other kind of challenge directly inside Acme, like a DNS one, that are available, but we, uh, you can dip uh, uh, there, and uh, we don't have use it, but you can if you want to. Thank you very much for your attention. I hope you have find it uh, quite useful for you, and uh, I am uh, here to uh, open to questions. Uh, great presentation. Thank you. So, 
question over there. Uh, you, you said you were using Searles Python for your Acme proxy? Uh, um, the Acme proxy is effectively, we rely on... Um, That's an open source project, right? So, so, yeah. so the question I have uh, on that is, ha have you only tried that with HTTPS challenge or did you also try that with the DNS challenge? Sorry, I've got to the point. But, uh, can I, you I was asking, have you only tried that with the HTTPS challenge to get a certificate, yeah. or did uh, did you also try the DNS challenge? No, um, uh, we have don't use the DNS challenge for one particular reason. Uh, we don't have API in front of our DNS setup, yes. and it is a requirement. In fact. Uh, you see there on the back end of the Acme proxy, we have got already an API. It is, it is key. I, 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 I make it, well, everything is simple, but if I haven't got the API, uh, um, on the back end of our Acme proxy, it will be challenging to, to implement it on our existing setup. And we don't have any API in front of, of our DNS setup, so we haven't used it. But one particular uh, point to, uh, we have to be precise on the DNS challenge. Uh, the DNS challenge needs uh, enrollment because you have to deploy your A DNS API key before using, and you disseminate a API key in your IT. Can be touchy. Yeah. Thank you. The other question I have yeah. is, so w when you deployed that Acme proxy, yeah. What, uh, I, I assume that was talking to some external certificate authority, right? Uh, I, I haven't got one uh, because I, I have only, it is only in our internal uh, private uh, network. We, I, I am relying, I am speaking about uh, only, uh, the, our use case is only uh, focused on um, certificate issuance by our internal PKI. I don't have, a, um, I don't rely on, a, it is our own certificate authority. Okay. It, uh, it is based, um, uh, I have got on uh, other schema, it is based on uh, Active Directory uh, Certificate Services. Uh, yeah, uh, we are coming. Uh, <laughs> thank you. All right, anyone else? Thank you for your presentation. Yeah. Uh, do you have any authentication on the Acme proxy, except of the challenge? No, but uh, it is um, our uh, our guess. Uh, it is our um, uh, the way we want to operate it. But um, I have spoke about the RFC, the main RFC. I use the term uh, uh, the main RFC because there is. Uh, RFC extension to Acme um, uh, that are currently implemented on more complex solution. Uh, it is called uh, external uh, account binding, and you've got um, uh, it's a require for the client, the Acme client, to register before to authenticate before asking the Acme server. So I think it is part of the response you you can have using Acme, but requiring uh, uh, a previously authentication before asking. Uh, in fact, when you use uh, external uh, account binding, you authenticate, then you have to uh, uh, answer to the challenge. It is a, a two-step, and we don't want the first step. But you can okay. have a, a use case, of course, uh, that require previous authentication before jumping into the main uh, ACME protocol. Okay, because here, here I see a risk is that if an attacker is able to change the DNS record, then you will also get uh, the certificate. But I think it is not the, your main problem if you are if you have uh, an already attacker that can change uh, DNS record and is already on the uh, on the server and he has already administrative rights because you have to do it. Uh, to uh, so we can elaborate <laughs> during the pause. All right, let's break for fifteen minutes. There's coffee and uh, tea and, and biscuits and so on outside. One. There's also the sign up for the PowerPoint karaoke outside by the registration desk. Thank you very much.
Thank you, Christophe.